Hello, my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. And in this week's video, we're gonna dive into how can you increase the display font size on your Tableau filters, which if you have gone down this rabbit hole before, you probably know how maddening this can be. So hopefully this is very helpful to you. Okay, let's just start off by looking at what is the general problem or issue that we're talking about here. So when you have a filter in Tableau, we're just keeping it simple, one filter on this dashboard, right? Tableau has whatever their default filter size is. Let's say it's, I don't know, roughly size nine font. And if you go in here and if you try to format this filter, yeah, you can change the font size technically, but all that that really does is it will change the font size in the title, or if you hit the drop down, you know, it'll increase there. But if you have a you know collapsed drop down like this, or this would be called a, a single value drop down in this scenario, this text never gets bigger. Do anything you want, everything you want. I've tried it all. You can't get that text to be bigger. Now, if it's a list view, right? If I had a single value list, that's different. The list view would actually show that increased font size. But that's again, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the drop down. So okay, what if I really want the drop down functionality? But I also, how did I get back here? There you go. But I also want that font size to be bigger. So there is a way to make that work, right? So notice this, it's a little bit of a hack here, but I've got this set up so that my user can hit this drop down here and change the region. It will filter the sheet. And then what they'll see here is just the name of whatever region that they've selected. Now, uh, there are a few caveats to this. I have not fully set this up yet. We'll do it together. If I select all right now, it actually tries to list all my regions, which gets a bit ugly. Uh, so we'll tackle how to handle that. Um, so in essence, this is just a worksheet. And then I've just scrunched a filter down so far that all you can see is the drop down. So if you look at that and you think, I can go recreate that on my own, great. But I think there are some, uh, some details that will be helpful to talk about, like this scenario. What if multiple values are selected? What if all the values are selected? How do we get that to say all or multiple values? Um, so we'll tackle that together. Now, I do just want to say a quick shout out to uh, my client, Vera Naya, who I was inspired by. So one of the cool things we do is we have office hours where we get to work with people and help them solve their most pressing problems, everything from level of detail expressions to data modeling to dynamic zone visibility. And one of the great things about it for me is, yes, I get to help people with my expertise, but generally there are a lot of times I actually learn something too, uh, which is pretty cool. This is one of those scenarios. So let's go back to the original uh, dashboard I had here that uh, has the just standard filter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new worksheet. And I'll call this my region label sheet. And so I guess what I'll do actually first is just show you what the uh, what the other version of this looked like. So the one that I already had that was working in that dashboard, it was a text-based marks card. I put the region on both the row shelf and also uh, text in the marks card. I increased the font size here, added the filter here. But the kind of the downside to this, like we mentioned, is the fact that if you were to select multiple, it's actually going to list them both, which is probably not ideal long term. So here's how I think maybe we should do this instead. What I'm going to do is create a calculated field, and I'll call this my region label calc, and we'll say this. We'll say if the min region equals the max region, then min region. So that's just sort of a fancy aggregated way of saying, if there's only one region on the worksheet, because the minimum equals the maximum, then just give us the name of that region. But what if there are multiple regions selected? So I know there are four regions in this data set. So maybe I'll say else if, you know, the count distinct of region equals four, then uh, I think the way that Tableau's filters usually show it would be like this. The cool thing about this, though, too, is that you could actually customize the text, unlike a standard Tableau filter where you can't. And then I'll just say else. Well, actually, I should say else if the count distinct of region is you know, less than or equal to three, then multiple regions. And we can update this text later. I'm not totally set on this. Uh, 
I guess that would be it. I don't know if somebody picked no regions, I guess it will just go null. I haven't decided what, what will happen there yet, but uh, let's give this a shot here. So let me put this region label calc on text and let's expand the size of this thing a little bit. Let's set it to entire view for now, which is gonna look terrible because it's all the way over here, but it's okay. We're gonna get this all cleaned up. So let's click in the text in the marks card and the ellipses and let's make this as big as we want. Maybe size 15 would be good. I don't need the tooltip. That's of course redundant and my user doesn't need to see that. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And now let's run a test on this thing. So if I put region on filters and just pick a single region like central, it should say central, which is cool. And then if I pick two, it should say multiple regions. And then if I click all, it should say all regions. So already, how cool is this that we have the sheet that we can say whatever we want in the filter uh, based on what we've selected up there. So let me pop back over here now. Um, so here now, here's where this gets kind of interesting. So we are going to pull that sheet on here, region label sheet. I need to make sure that this filter, the actual filter applies to that sheet as well. So I'm going to hit the drop down the original filter, apply to worksheets, selected worksheets, and region label sheet. Okay. That makes this filter over here redundant, so that can go away. And now we've got a bit of a formatting battle to uh, take care of because the issue here is that how do I get this little drop down next to this label and make it look like a regular filter, but also have a little title for the filter. So we're about to get into the world of layout containers. If you don't know about a lot about this or it's intimidating, we do have a video on that, which I'll link up down below. Side note, while I'm thinking about that, I will also link up this video down below or this workbook, I should say, so you can download this and check it out, reverse engineer it if you want to. Um, okay, so let me do this. I'm going to put a horizontal container up here. This is going to house the eventual filter, but for now, I'll just throw a blank in there as a placeholder. Uh, if you're not super familiar with containers, what I'm looking for is this dark blue border. When I try and drop the object, that tells me that object is going inside the container. And then now for getting the filter to, or getting our, our hacked together pieces to look like a filter, let me put a horizontal container over here. Let me add a border around that container. So I'll go to my border section, do this. I'm in the layout menu, by the way. Uh, let's add a little bit of outer padding because uh, containers do not have outer padding by default. So I've just added four. Now my worksheet, let me right click and deselect show title. Let me get rid of all the outer padding on my sheet. And then let's bring the sheet in here. Okay. And then let's bring the filter over here. Same vibe. We're going to take all the outer padding off. We're going to right click and deselect show title. And then we need to scrunch this thing to make it tiny. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I can edit the width. Yeah, I think I want to make it even smaller than this. So as small as it will make, let me make it up, up to a point, I guess. 25 looks good because you can see now I, I don't see like a little double drop down. All I see is this tiny little drop down arrow. So already you kind of get the sense for what we're doing here. We're getting closer and closer. If I scrunch this thing farther to the left, which we will do when we bring it up here, it would look good. Now to get the little title to show up and make it look like a regular um, filter, I'll need to bring a vertical container over here. Let me put a text object in there. So I'll call this thing region, make it bold, second from the top. Maybe filter titles are, no, filter titles are not medium, that's too dark. Maybe they're just Tableau book, but bold. Good enough. So let's grab this container. Uh, the best way to grab the whole container and make sure you're not just grabbing a piece that's inside of it is select an object, double click on the handle, that grabs the whole container. Let's now move that over here under this little region label. And we've got it. So now let me go out, grab region, double click that, get the whole vertical container that everything's stacked inside of, bring that over here. One of the uh, many benefits of layout containers is that you can control the exact height or width of an object inside a container. So I've got my pieced together region filter. I hit the drop down, I select edit width, and let's say, let's try like 200. Um, so we may end up wanting to make it wider than that long term, but let's at least try this to begin with. So what I wanted to see is just to make sure that in doing that could, oh, it's a single value drop down. So actually let me change this to a multiple values drop down because I would also like to test 
to make sure that multiple regions could fit, which it, it can't, just barely. So two options, we can either widen this thing out, and I don't think we'd have to go that much further. Let's try 240, which looks good, or you could make the text smaller. Um, yeah, but this is cool, right? So now we've got this like totally customized looking filter up here. Let me just kind of clean this up a little bit more for the uh, final reveal. And then actually just to tie this whole thing together, I'm gonna double click on my sheet name down below and insert the region field. So it'd say like sales by state in central or central and east or all, right? So it's pretty cool that we uh, that we can customize that to be whatever we like. So there you go. You might look at that and say, ah, oh, that seems kind of intense. This video took a while to get through it. Well, yeah, it, it is a bit more work, of course, because we are kind of piecing this all together. But that said, once you do one or two of these, it's also going to go a lot faster. It takes me a little time to kind of explain all the intricacies of it. So I hope that that is helpful. Please let us know below if this did help you or if you're still stuck on something, it's not working. If you have some additional questions, uh, we would love to help. And like I mentioned earlier, we do have office hours. So if you're ever just like, yeah, please, let's just work together and get this thing done. We'd also love to help you there. So thank you so much. And we'll see you at another video soon. Thanks.